What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. Today we're going to be talking about some important things you need to know for your first software development job. And this video is largely for people who are soon to be starting their first job or people who are in their first week or month or even like first six months. I'm going to talk about 10 good professional practices and things to know about when starting out in your first software job. If you're into web development, coding, you're just starting your coding journey, you're into freelancing, or just conquering life in general, consider hitting that subscribe button below. Lots of great videos planned for 2020. All right, number one, be sure that you're somewhat familiar with the Scrum methodology or Agile philosophy. Software companies all over the world use this, and more than likely, the one you're going to be working at or the one you just started at uses it. Now my quick and easy definition is that Scrum is this agile process for managing complex tasks. So you have a group of people on a team, you got these tasks that need to be done, and Scrum is the best way to handle it, in the opinion of many. So you're probably already somewhat familiar. You've probably heard of stand-ups and sprint planning. Uh, basically, sprint planning can be any number of days or weeks or months. Let's just say two weeks in our example. You have this two-week window that is a sprint cycle. At the beginning of it, you have this sprint planning where all these issues are dealt out to different people to handle. And then every day you have a stand up where you go around the room and each person gives an update on how their tasks are going. Then at the end you have this retrospective, but we don't wanna get in the weeds here. Basically, just be familiar enough with it that you can step in and act like you at least know what you're doing a little bit. Because scrum people take it very, very serious. Almost too serious. In fact, Scrum Masters will kill you. Hey Travis, all that sounds great, but is that being tracked? Is there a story for that? An issue? A ticket? A PBI? Hey, it's Travis who just joined. Number two, coding is only part of your job. We all think we're gonna get this coding job, we're gonna go in, we're gonna sit down in the morning, we're just gonna code all day long. Well, that never happens. For one, I don't think people can sustain eight straight hours of coding. But two, that's only part of your job as a software developer. Software developers are brainstormers. They're planners. They're thinkers. They're architects. You'll be in lots of meetings discussing new projects. You'll be discussing best practices and how to best approach different things. And your input is valuable because of the way you think. Coding is just a part of your job. The best way to approach this up front is to just listen to the more experienced people, how they ask good questions and how they bring out solutions to these complex problems. You can learn a lot by just listening in your first couple of weeks. Number three, and this is one I still struggle with to this day, always give yourself more time to finish a task than you think it's gonna take. Now, I came from the freelance world. I did a couple of years of freelancing. And with freelancing, there's usually not as big of a budget and you feel really crunched to finish things somewhat fast. Now, in the corporate world, things move a lot slower and there's bigger budgets. It's okay to say, hey, this is gonna take me X amount of time, which is longer than you really think it's gonna take. I have this habit of being in like a one o'clock stand up and I'm thinking, I'm 98% done with this. I just got one last thing to finish. And they go, hey, Travis, how's that going? I have this habit of saying, it's going great. I'm almost done with it. I should have it done by end of day. Never a good idea. Days never go as smooth as you think they're going to go. Something always happens. Something breaks. Some meeting is called. Some system goes down. Never do that. If you think you'll be done at the end of the day, always say it should be done by end of week. Always give yourself extra time. Then if you do finish it early, it's a great thing and you surprise everybody and everybody's happy. So when you start out and you get in there, don't feel rushed to finish stuff. Give yourself adequate time, put a little padding on it to make sure that you can produce a fully completed project or task. Number four, be sure that you know and are comfortable with Git. 
before starting this job. Now, almost all software companies use Git or some form of it for their version control, and it's going to be pretty much assumed that you know it. Whatever languages that you're required to code in, they give you a little flexibility there. They may even train you at first on that language, but something like Git, it's going to be assumed. And if not, and you come in with a couple of people that don't know it, if you know it, you can kind of get ahead from the outset. Also, be sure that you practice using Git in a team setting and that you follow best practices like pulling the latest changes before pushing your commit. Another bonus, and this is actually being used in not only the first corporate job I had after coming out of freelancing for a couple of years, but the new job that I'm at currently, in both of these jobs, they used this GitFlow workflow. Now, some guy created this. There's a diagram out there. You can Google it. But anyway, it may be a good idea to know that too. When I went into my first job, they were like, hey, we use the GitFlow workflow. And I was like, cool, me too. Because I thought they were just saying we use Git. But then I found out, hey, there's actually a little substance to this I need to read up on. So anyway, that's a bonus. But mainly, make sure that you're comfortable with Git before you start this job or as you go into this job. Next, learn how to properly ask for help. There is a right and a wrong way to go about doing this. So you're going to run into these roadblocks as a new developer in this job. You're going to be given some kind of task and you're going to hit this roadblock. You're not going to know what to do. You're going to have to go find a mid or a senior level developer and ask them for help, unless one of your other junior developers can help you. But when you go to that senior developer, how do you do it? What is the right way and what is the wrong way? Here's my quick summary of it, and I think this is really helpful. The wrong way is to just say, hey, I got a question. I got this task, and it asked me to do this, and I don't know how to do it. Could you help me? Like, that's wrong. Don't ever do that. Here's the right way to do it. Take the task, work it, try some different scenarios, try some things out, try to solve it yourself. And then, and only then, when you go to that mid or senior level developer for help, you approach them this way. Hey, so-and-so, I have this task and I kind of hit a roadblock. Here are the things I've tried. That is the key. You've got to present to them these scenarios that you've tried out. Because if not, they're going to have to start from the beginning and be like, have you tried this? Have you tried this? And they have tons of stuff themselves they have to do. They have bigger issues that they're working on. Make sure you go to them with the things you've already tried. So again, you go to them and you say, hey, I've tried this. I found out this was a problem, so then I tried this, and then I tried this approach, and I'm kind of out of ideas now. Do you have any thoughts? That's the way to ask for help. Do your homework first, do your work first, and only then go for the help. Now next, and along the same lines as the last one, is this. If someone else knows how to do something or has the answer to something that you've been assigned to work on, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should go to them and ask them how to do it. Now if you're pressed for time or something, maybe. But for the most part, you should not go to that person Ask them how to do it or suggest that they do it instead of you because they're more familiar with it. So let's say that that person is like a mid-level developer and a month ago they created this feature. And then a month later, you're asked to fix an issue with that feature. Now you may think, I'm just going to walk over there and ask him, hey, how did you do it? How would you fix it? Or you may think, why don't they assign it to him instead? But you shouldn't expect either of those. The task has been given to you and it's a great opportunity to come up to speed on your company's software better to learn a new feature and to take on that task yourself, take the time to learn it and to grow further. The easy way out is to go bother him or her. And if they're mid or senior level, they have this high overview, uh, bigger issues that they're working on. They're probably loaded with stuff to do already. They don't really have time for you to come over and them to work your problem. You may think that's the easy way out, but it's not. It's better for you to Take the time to learn it. Again, come up to speed with your company software. Learn as much as you can about it. Learn about that feature and be accountable for it. Number seven, always ask questions when it comes to new tasks or new features being introduced. So I struggle with this too. I'm the type of person that if somebody's like, hey, Travis, the client wants this thing on the navigation bar. They like this feature. They wanted to do this and that. I'm the type of person that's like, cool, I'll get started right now. And I'm immediately just jumping into it. A good developer goes, okay, cool, why do they want that? How will that feature benefit 
you know, their vision for their business or their site. Because a lot of times we don't need to approach it the way that's planned. Maybe, hey, we don't even need this middle step. We can skip over that and just do this. It's always good to get a clear picture of exactly what you need to do. And the best way to do that is to ask questions and to really nail down the purpose of what you're building and also to be sure you're doing the right things. If you just take what they say on the surface and you go build something and not know why, or their intentions for doing that, you might finish it and then show it and they'll be like, oh, that's that's not really what they were thinking. And then boom, you should have asked questions. And then you gotta go back and redo stuff. So always try to ask questions and dig out the deeper motives up front. For instance, let's say somebody goes, hey, Travis, we want you to build this web hook so this company can hit it and post to our software. Now you might be like, how should we build this? And they say, hey, let's use like a Lambda function or a logic app or something like that. Something we can hit and kind of post the data through this API. You may be like, cool. And then you jump in there and you, you start building it out and you get all. And then when you're like 75% done, somebody's like, oh, here's the mapping info. Here's the fields you need to be mapping. And you go, oh, I didn't even know that existed. I just assumed that this would be this and that's how I hooked it up. I didn't know this existed, but it did exist. And you can bet that there was some meeting somewhere where people diagrammed this whole thing out that you weren't involved in, that you should have asked about and retrieved before you even started on that feature. So when somebody gives you a project or something to do, ask a few questions, probe the task, probe the people, and be sure that you have everything you need to do the task. Ask if there's diagrams. Even suggest that, hey, we need to really map this thing out before we even start. That's a good thing. Hey, we need a flow chart to figure out how things are gonna go. Let's get this down, and then only we'll start building this feature. You may be like, you know, a lot of companies aren't gonna hear that. They're just like, do this and go do it. I think opposite. I think companies will respect you for that. And to be honest, that's how senior and mid-level developers work. They ask questions and they ask for important information upfront so that their product can be exactly what the client wanted. Number eight, and this one should be pretty straightforward, don't email people or send Slack messages on off hours. Like if it's nine o'clock at night and you had this idea, don't send it until the morning. Just make a note of it. Because most people have these applications on their phone and when you send them something at nine o'clock at night and they're, they're sitting there reading their kids to sleep and they, their phone buzzes, you've basically interrupted them in their off hours. Now, not everybody follows this. I know managers that do it. I think managers do it more often because their schedule is a little more hectic. And I know some developers do it and they don't care. But in general, try to make it a habit not to send emails or Slack messages or anything that's going to interrupt people's off hours. Okay, just wait till the morning and, and send it then. Number nine, don't be heroic in your first week or month. You might come in there feeling super confident, you're an awesome coder, and you might be. You may wanna show your skills, you want people to know that you're dependable. Don't jump in there and be like volunteering for big things. Like somebody goes, hey, we need all of this data migrated over to this thing. Don't be like, I'll do it. Hey, look, it's your first week, it's your first month. Just sit back, let somebody else do it for now. You may be able to do it, but don't, because if you do and then you screw things up, it's gonna look really bad. And that's gonna be from the start of your time at that company. So kind of know your place when you start. You're new. People can see you as a dependable developer without you taking on these heroic tasks. So take it easy from the start. Don't try to do anything big. And finally, be accountable. Accountability is everything. If somebody goes, hey, Travis, we got this new feature. I want you to take the lead on it. I want you to build it out and I want you to probe the client for info and present it to them when it's done. Here's the due date, blah, blah, blah. That is 100% on you. If something goes wrong, you can't be like, well, the client didn't give me this. Practice being a fully accountable developer. When things are given to you, you want people to be able to rely on you. If something goes wrong, apologize. Take the hit because you are accountable. This is a very, very important thing. And I think many senior developers and mid-level developers would totally agree with me. If we got a task for you to do and we give it wholly to you and you show that accountability and you handle it and do what you need to do, take responsibility for failures, people will see that, people will trust you, and I think you'll grow faster as a developer and probably move up faster in the company. 
Don't be that developer that blames other people all the time. It's never a good thing. If you're working with somebody toxic like that, show them how to lead. Show them how to be accountable by your actions and by you taking responsibility for that project. Hope that was helpful. Thank you guys for watching and consider hitting that subscribe button. See you in the next video.